Welcome to Force at You, a place where all business and supply chain enthusiasts come for a weekly dose of knowledge. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, you're missing out on value adding content. Taking the right approach to planning can significantly minimize the processes required to deal with the variability on the execution side of the organization. Making certain that all of the puzzle pieces fit properly and are in the proper positions is crucial. If you have competent, experienced personnel, do not fire them in favor of the latest or the brightest thing that appears on the scene and claims to be the answer to all your issues. Before introducing new processes or investing in them, provide them with the tools they need and let them utilize their experience to repair all the broken ones. So what brings about variability? Most businesses run their operations using ERP software. There are modules in the ERP program for inputting your forecast and production plans, which are then generated by a MPS or MRP system to determine replenishment operations based on buyer orders, producer orders, inventory levels, and numerous parameter settings. Common settings include order buckets, safety stock, planning horizon days, demand time fences, forecast consumption methods, lot sizing criteria, and lead time days. The item master contains extra settings that specify the type of item and how MPS and MRP will handle that item during the update cycle. Additionally, a corporation must deal with the actual execution of supply chain activities by individuals who possess varying degrees of proficiency, not just in carrying out the task itself, but also in using a certain ERP system and data analysis tools used by the company. Before establishing additional processes to handle this variability, we must first understand that variability will always exist, regardless of how much work we put into our processes. These additional processes will eventually introduce their unpredictability. Nobody, living or dead, can claim to have lived a life without mistakes. All systems, including life, will have some degree of variability, just as every forecast will inevitably have some degree of mistake. The next thing we must acknowledge is that not every product we produce for sale can be predicted. According to the 80-20 rule, we can be reasonably certain that 80% of a company's volume can be projected with tolerable accuracy and that world-class service can be accomplished with a combination of capacity, flexibility and a suitable level of statistically estimated safety stock in place. Never set your safety stock settings with a shotgun technique. A fast Google search will quickly turn up several statistical approaches for estimating safety stock that is widely accepted in the industry. After all of this, it just comes down to having experts with experience in your company that appreciate the simplicity and can interpret and apply business requirements. They can configure the tools and applications to work for your business rather than merely adding for layers of processes to make up for shortcomings. Because they are familiar with how they work, they recognize the benefits of both preparation and execution and are aware that you cannot have one without the other. Instead of engaging in a cycle of hiring and firing, they value and are prepared to invest in their employees. They understand that certificates can be gained in a matter of months, but it doesn't mean the individual can comprehend and apply those qualifications in the real world. They value experience equally to education. Let us now understand the factors affecting volatility and lead times. To start with, let us understand the volatility due to promotional sales. Demand is one of the most important pieces of information that is used in supply chain management. Demand sharing and demand forecasting are extremely helpful for supply chain managers since it provides a great source of information for planning and decision making. Demand forecasting is the basis for a lot of managerial decisions in the supply chain such as demand planning, inventory control, production planning. 
Demand volatility inherently exists due to consumer behavior that constantly changes because of promotions. Promotion is a very common practice in the retailing industry that can make demand volatile. Demand volatility and variability can occur during or after promotional periods. Let us talk about volatility due to volume discounts. Volume discounts cause price fluctuations. Price fluctuation is one of the operational causes of the bullwhip effect. A quantity discount is an economic incentive to encourage organizations to purchase goods in large quantities. Basically, the rewards are given to the buyers by the vendors for making big purchases by reducing the per unit price. Quantity discounts not only may help the seller increase the sales revenue and reach economies of scale, but also have other advantages for businesses. From the viewpoint of the buyer, quantity discounts means an opportunity to reduce purchasing cost. However, buying more than needed at a specific point in time increases the inventory holding cost. Taking both effects into account, one may argue that quantity discounts are profitable for firms as long as the reduction in purchasing cost outweighs the increasing ho- increase in holding cost. However, the overall picture is more complex. Given that pursuing quantity discounts has huge implications in the wider supply chain. For example, large order quantities contribute to distortion of information, thus seriously damaging the supply chain through the bullwhip effect. Under such circumstances, quantity discounts may eventually result in increased production and transportation cost. Variability in supply chain can occur due to long cycle time. A long cycle time in a supply chain can have several negative effects on an industry. Some of these effects include increased lead time which can lead to delays in the delivery of goods to consumers can also result in lost sales and consumer dissatisfaction increased cost of some goods may need to be sorted for longer periods and additional resources may be needed to manage the extended lead time this will ultimately result in a decrease in efficiency and increase in volatility in the supply chain leading to difficulty in forecasting the actual demand for the goods Talking about demand forecasting, while demand forecasting can be a valuable tool for managing the supply chain, it is not without its challenges and limitations. Some of how demand forecasting can act as a constraint in the supply chain include Firstly, the forecast accuracy. One of the biggest challenges of demand forecasting is that it is difficult to predict customer demand with complete accuracy. This can lead to errors in the forecast which can result in either overstocking or understocking of inventory both of which can be costly for a business followed by the accumulation of time and resources of creating the demand forecast based on the data collection and ala- analysis which can be a major restraint for businesses which with limited resources or tight budgets the external factor wherein demand forecasting is also subject to the influence of external factors such as changes in the economy shifts in the consumer preferences and the actions of competitors These factors can make it difficult to accurately predict demand and create additional constraints for business. Overall, while demand forecasting can be a valuable tool for managing the supply chain, companies need to be aware of its challenges and limitations to effectively utilize it. We now talk about inflated orders. Inflated orders or orders that are larger than actual demand for a product can have several negative effects on the supply chain of a company. Some of these effects include overstocking which can be costly for a company because of the excess valuable inventory space that it takes up which can tie up capital that could be better used elsewhere it can also lead to lost sales overstocked inventory can lead to lost sales if excess inventory is not sold before it becomes outdated or otherwise unsellable this can especially be damaging for businesses that sell perishable goods such as foods or pharmaceuticals It can also lead to inefficient allocation of resources which can lead to producing extra inventory which will require additional resources such as transportation and storage charges that could be used better elsewhere Overall inflated orders can have ne- negative effects on the supply chain of a company including increased cost and lost sales It is important for business to carefully manage their demand forecasting and ordering processes to avoid inflated orders and maintain an efficient and effective supply chain 
thank you for watching the video stay tuned to our channel force edu for more such informative videos